Here we are again with Manny Pacheco, where John and I are just sitting at the edge of our seats, holding on tightly to find out something that may be forgotten, maybe not forgotten, but certainly it's Hollywoodish. Well, don't, don't you dare fall off your seat. Oh, I'm holding on tight. I love it. <laughs> you know, Manny, uh, Art brings up a good point, and that is you are Mr. Forgotten Hollywood. You really are an expert in mm. uh, historic Hollywood and a, a lot of details that people have forgotten. But I know, I happen to know that you also, even though you don't tout it, you are also on top of everything that happens in Hollywood. You are a current film aficionado. You're not just an old film buff. Um, and I know that you're on top of things. And, and of course, the Academy Awards will be coming up soon. Um, and one of the pop, one of the areas that I wanted to ask you about is foreign films. Do you get to see a lot of foreign mm. films? Well, I do. I mean, over the years, I've seen some great films with Penelope Cruz or Antonio Banderas that are doing some more foreign films than, than American films uh, than they have in the past. Um, I've seen some great films. Uh, there was one year in particular where we had Roma from Mexico and we had a Cold War from Poland. Both. Uh cinematography, beautifully made films, and of course, Roma won Best Director. Cold yes. War, in my estimation, probably should have beaten Roma for cinematography, but both were nominated for Oscars. And of course, way back in the past, when I was growing up, going to UCLA back in the um, you know early 80s, late late 70s into the early 80s, uh, some great films like uh, Cousin Cousin that came out of France, and then the following year, Francois Truffaut's Small Change, both again, uh, look, looking at uh, Oscar opportunities, um, great, great films. But this year is no different. We've got some really wonderful uh, foreign entries. What should we be looking for? Well, I've seen two of the three that I want to see. And the first one, of course, got a lot of a buzz from the Cannes Film Festival. And that was Anatomy of a Fall. And basically, it's a, a mystery, uh, basically a courtroom drama that comes out of France. France did a tremendously dumb move because each country is allowed to uh, have one movie represent that country and they enter it to the academy and they did not enter anatomy of a fall they, they entered another film I, I the name escapes me but it's, it's a fine film but in every other case in every other chance where international films are represented where nobody gets to enter anything they're just put out there and they win anatomy of a fall is winning that and so unfortunately it will not be up for best international feature for the oscars but it's so good that it's getting a lot of buzz that it, it might be nominated actually for best picture of the year that's wow. how good this film is and the actress who's in the film, uh, is also uh, looking, I think her name is, uh, I, I, forgive me if I give her, get her name wrong, but I believe it's Sandra Hulier, uh, I, I, something like that. Anyway, yeah. uh, she, she's looking to, um, to get a nomination for Best Actress as well. I mean, she's in the running. And she was also in another uh, foreign entry that I have not seen, but boy, this, is, this looks like a really... Uh, a, a film that that could now take the best uh, international feature because Anatomy of the Fall is now out of the running. And that is called The Zone of Interest. And it is a remarkably well done British entry. And it it's, it's, uh, takes place in Germany during World War II. And it's the story of Rudolf Hess and his wife who lived outside of Auschwitz and lived a practically normal life. Wow. You know, the pretty picket fence and the, the garden in front and they make dinner together and they live this really charming life. And and you and you can't help when, when you actually think about it, you go, wait a minute, there are ashes everywhere. There are. I mean, how do you how do you not understand the atrocity that's going on at Auschwitz? But yeah. that's how remarkable this film is. It's remarkable in the fact that it's mundane. And of course, Rudolf Hess would later then uh, uh, you know steal a plane and give up in britain remember he would he would actually leave yes germany yeah. during the war and actually yeah. give up um hoping to do a negotiation for uh, for the end of war which absolutely infuriated hitler but anyway that's that story and it's looking like now that might be the oscar favorite and i cannot wait to see this movie wow 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and then the third movie that I've seen this year, just a cute little, almost a Woody Woody Allen esque kind of film called Fallen Leaves. Mm-hmm. Every tune that's played in this movie has to do with autumn oh. when leaves are falling, including you know autumn leaves. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's a cute little film about you know these two very lonely people who meet at a karaoke bar of all things, and um, they 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 show interest, but of course. They one loses the phone number and they have to be able to run into each other. And what's remarkable about this film is that the director chose to keep everybody absolutely deadpan. No emotion from anybody. So wow. they're saying these remarkably funny things where you're actually laughing out loud. Yeah. But they're saying it with a straight, not shouting kind of face. You think wow. I sing well? Very interesting. I, yeah. Uh, well, what, once you, what, country, what country is that from? That's from Finland. I have never seen a movie from Finland. It's a Finnish movie. Hmm. And uh, in fact, the actress, whose name escapes me, actually got nominated for the Golden Globes uh, as a Best Actress uh, nominee. Hmm. So, and, yes. And, uh, so we can expect to possibly expect to see two of those three films uh, at the Oscars. Yes, for Best Picture. I believe that Fallen Leaves will be the Finnish entry that actually is nominated for Best Foreign Film as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I can't even tell you how funny it is. There's one scene in that movie I want to tell you where one of the friends of the guy who's falling in love thinks he's like the greatest karaoke singer. And me me having done karaoke for many, many, many years, I know people just like this gentleman. And uh, he says, I'm I'm a great singer. Most I'm waiting for that recording contract to come. But I mean, no emotion. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, and, and his friend saying, yes, yes, you should wait. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just silly, but it, it works because it is deadpan. I think it, yeah. if it if it had been with a little bit more emotion, and, and I think it would have been a trite film. But I think it's kind of magnis- magnificent in its approach, and it's just fun. And it's called Fallen Leaves. So hmm. there you go. There's my third entry. It sounds well. like a lot of fun. Before you go, I want to ask you for your favorite classic foreign film, because there are so many. Hmm. So many great foreign films of the past that were so influential, artistic. I think of uh, the Japanese music, uh, Japanese movies. uh, The Seven Samurai, yeah, yeah. Seven Samurai, things like that. The Bike Bicycle Thieves, of course. Yeah, Bicycle Thief was. So, do you have a favorite? A a classic. Yeah, for me, for me, it is absolutely Kusan Kusin. Uh, That came Mm. out in 1975. I know it's not as classic as the 30s, 40s, or 50s. I mean, but I mean, to me, I could watch that again and again and again. It's such a great little rom-com before they were called rom-coms. Yeah. And and it was so good that they they did an English version of that film uh, with Ted Danson called Cousins. And so, I mean, they, they Americanized it and made it an American entry of the same film. Same yeah. thing happened with the uh, one tall man with the with the with the big red shoe or something like that. I forget the name. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. You remember now, the tall blonde, the tall blonde man with the one red shoe? Yeah. Uh, yeah I that, thought you were going to say Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Oh well, because because how it looks like La La Land and it influenced La La Land. It's a yeah. beautiful film. Yeah. I mean, I I I can't discount how wonderful that film is. And I can see where you would, might think that I might love that film because I do have a real warm spot for musicals, as you know. Was The Red yes. Balloon a, a foreign film? The Red Balloon? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, that was pretty good. Oh, that was, well, it was way better than pretty good. It was it was magnificent. Yeah. No, these are all really, really good films. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean... Well, what, I, I, but I did ask you to pick your favorite, so... Yeah, you know, so, yeah, know, I mean... Tough. It's a tough choice. I mean, even the silent German entries, you know, the the, the, the yeah. cabinets of Dr. Cagliari. Oh, I mean, there's some, oh, there's yeah. some really just fa- fabulous foreign films throughout the, you know, throughout the years and decades. But if I had to pick one, I, I really, really love Kusan Kusin. I, I just, I just, I, I can't, I, I even, I even made a recommendation to TCM to please air that during their foreign Sundays. And I got a, mm-hmm. I got an email back from our good friends at, at, at TCM. And they said, you know, we're going to consider that because that is a great film. And it did get Oscar attention. So yeah, yeah. why not? So yes, uh, I have already made that. Uh, I've already made that call. 
that yeah. email, that email. <laughs> Foreign films. I love it. Thank you, Manny. Thank you. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao, baby. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.